the different pieces of the armor of God. Ephesians six thirteen to 18 Therefore take unto you, or receive up, the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Believe you me, we are living in the evil days, from the days of John the Baptist until now. The kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Matthew 11 verse 12 we need to equip ourselves with the knowledge of God and what has been freely given unto us by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. For the people who know the Lord their God shall be strong and carry out mighty exploits. Daniel 11 verse 32 Once more, what does it mean to know God? John tells us, And by this we know that we have known Him, if... We keep his commandments. 1 John 2 verse 3 Therefore let us discover what God has to say about his seven redemptive names and become a doer of what we have read. Seven is the number of perfection and it is the number of God. God created the world in six days and on the seventh day he rested of all his works. God revealed himself to us in seven redemptive names to explain to us his perfect redemption plan so that we can rest fully from all our works as well and now allow the Holy Spirit to work through us. Likewise, the whole armor of God is also perfect and has seven pieces. One, the girdle or belt of truth. Two, the breastplate of righteousness. Three, the shoes of the gospel of peace. Four, the shield of faith. Five, the helmet of salvation. Six, the sword of the Spirit. And seven, all prayers, including praying in tongues. Every piece of that armor of God has to do with the word of God. One, the girdle or belt of truth. Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? John 18 verse 38. Some Christians and many people who are unsaved are still asking themselves that question. The world, which belongs to Satan and their way of thinking, comes straight from Satan. As we have explained when Jesus called Peter Satan, because he thought like the people of the world and was mindful of the things of the world and not the things of God. The people of the world and some Christians who have been deceived will tell you that there is no absolute truth, but only partial truth, and that every truth is only true to a certain degree. But that is Satan feeding them with that lie. This is the absolute truth. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man or woman comes unto the Father but by me. John 14 verse 6 so, until a person receives Jesus Christ as his Lord and Saviour, he has a lie. A partial truth is a lie, and he is on the wrong side of the road and is dead. Jesus is the way of life, the way of thinking, the way of believing, the way of doing everything. Jesus is the absolute truth and life. So, that is why Paul starts with the belt of truth. If you do not have Jesus, who is the truth, forget everything else. The Roman soldiers hang their provision of food on that belt, their flask of water hung on that belt, their sword in its sheaf hung on that belt. Jesus, who is the truth, is also the word of God. John 1 verse 1 So he prays to God for you and me. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. 
John 17, verse 16 to 17. The written word of God is the absolute truth of God. So, you and I need to renew our mind. Sanctification is being set apart from the world and its ways, and then embracing the ways of Jesus. The more we spend time in the word of God, which is his truth, and become doers of it, there is a greater separation from the world. The things we once loved and were sinful, we love no more, and we start loving the things of God. God and his word are one. If you spend time in the word of God, you are spending time with God. Do not be deceived. Just like evil company corrupts good habits, likewise good company transforms bad habits. 1 Corinthians 15.33 you and I need to start hanging out with the Godhead, and they will share many of their secrets with us. James says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. James 4 verse 8 People are double-minded because they have not believed that the Word of God is the absolute truth and do not spend time in the Word of God to become doers of that Word. So why don't you and I give it a try and start hanging out with God by reading His Word and meditating on His Word and speaking His Word and doing His Word? Jesus says, You will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. John 8 verse 32 Many people are still in bondage to a situation because they do not know what God says about their situation in His Word, which is the truth. As long as you and I are in ignorance concerning the will of God in a particular subject, the devil will be oppressing and tormenting us. We will think God wants us to go through it, but the moment we know that what we are going through is not the will of God, we will be able to submit to God by agreeing with his word, and then resist the devil with the written word of God, and he will flee from us. It is only the truth that you know that makes you free. The Bible is the truth, and there are many promises in the Bible. As long as we are ignorant of them, we will still be in bondage. That is why it is crucial to spend time reading the Word of God, so that you and I may know the truth of the Word of God. The Bible studies we write are meant to equip us with the knowledge of the truth of God in a particular subject, so that we can submit to God by agreeing with His Word, and resist the devil through the written Word of God, and he will flee from us. People will ask, how do I submit to God? First of all, you need to agree with what God says about your situation. Amos says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? Amos 3 verse 3 If God says in his written word, which is the truth, that something is sin or of the devil or demon possession or bad, you need to agree with him. And then God will tell you in his written word what to do to make yourself free from that bondage or situation or to receive the manifestation of the blessing of the Lord. And when the enemy comes and tries to cause us to reject the word of God, we keep telling him what is written concerning our situation as Jesus exemplified it for us in Matthew 4 verse 1 to 11, and the devil will flee from us. The belt also protects the kidneys or loins, and the role of the kidney is to filter the blood. Kidneys remove all the toxins from the blood, and they are expelled out of our body as urine. The belt or girdle covers or protects the kidneys or loins of our mind. Peter tells us, Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end, for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 1 verse 13 so spiritually, that belt or girdle of truth is in our mind, just like the kidneys filter the blood and remove the toxins from our body, so let us also use the word of God to filter every thought that crosses our mind.
Every thought or imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of the Word of God, which is the truth, let us bring it down and hold it captive to the obedience of the Word of God and cast it out of our mind. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 in Exodus 12, when the Hebrews were about to leave Egypt and journey toward the promised land, Moses told them, You shall eat it, the Passover lamb, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Exodus 12, verse 11. Jesus is our Passover lamb, and the Passover meal they had was symbolic of the Holy Communion that we have in the New Testament. So in the Bible study of the application of the perfect redemption plan of God, we explain in detail the meaning of the Holy Communion and what the meaning of the different elements are. So having your loins girded is to tie up all loose ends that can hinder you in your walk. They used to wear robes back in the days of Moses, but under their robe they wore trousers, so they would lift their robe and fold it in that girdle to free their legs and be able to walk and run fast. Paul tells us to also tie up all loose ends, mainly sin, so that we will be able to run and fight effectively, saying, Therefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Hebrews 12 verse 1 You therefore endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man or woman who wars entangles himself or herself with the affairs of this life, so that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. 2 Timothy 2 verse 3 to 4 Jesus is our Passover lamb, and we need to eat it without the leaven of sin and leave Egypt and its ways behind us if we want to have the manifestations of the blessings of the promised land. That generation that went out of Egypt did not make it into the promised land because they did not renew their minds. They did not tie up loose ends in their lives by spiritually girding the loins of their minds with the truth of the word of God. When they were in the wilderness, they made an idol of a golden calf and worshipped it. They committed sexual immorality with the people of Moab and they raised a leader for themselves to go back to Egypt. Isaiah tells us, talking about Jesus, Righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his heart. Isaiah 11 verse 5 And David prophesied about Jesus, saying, You love righteousness and hate wickedness or lawlessness. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Psalm 45 verse 7 it is time for us to gird our loins with righteousness and practice righteousness. In our hearts we must be faithful or loyal to the truth of the word of God, because God desires faithfulness or loyalty to his word, rather than sacrifices in the knowledge of God, more than burnt offerings. Hosea 6 verse 6 I remember one day I was reading my Bible and God started to speak to me. God knows that I like mathematics and physics, because to some extent they are viewed as exact sciences. And when I was studying computer science, they taught us how to mathematically prove that an algorithm, which is a step-by-step problem-solving text procedure on your computer, was true or false, if it will exactly do the function you have created it for, and it will give you the exact result you said it will do. So we used Boolean algebra to prove any algorithm, and many computer programmers can write different parts of the algorithm, but at the end, when it is put together, they can prove that all the different parts of the algorithm are doing exactly what they are supposed to do. The Ariane 5 rocket, which cost 7 billion US dollars, exploded on June the 4th, 1996, after its launch. The problem was simple. 
the parts of the algorithm were written by different teams. Each part was proven mathematically, but once assembled, they did not prove the whole algorithm mathematically. A simple problem of conversion of bits in the software, the team did not consult each other, so when they launched it, it exploded. So God told me, I wrote 66 books in the Bible and used 44 authors, but it is the same Holy Spirit who dictated to them what to write over those centuries. They did not consult each other, but they all said the same thing. I said to God, Okay. So God told me to take a notepad and a pen, and I will demonstrate mathematically that sin, sickness and death are from the devil. So I laughed at the beginning because I said to myself, It cannot be proven mathematically. But I took my notepad and pen. So the Lord started to speak and said, Ezekiel said that iniquity was first found in Satan in Ezekiel 28.15. I said, yes. He said, so sin, iniquity and trespass originated from Satan. So in Genesis, when Adam and Eve were deceived by Satan and sinned, they died spiritually and the physical death and sickness were just consequences of their sin. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, Paul said in Romans 6 verse 23. Then I said, I agree thus far. So he said, Did I not say to Peter that one day to me is like one thousand years for humans in 2 Peter 3 verse 8? I said, Yes, God, you did. And he said, Remember in Isaiah 38 verse 4 to 8, when King Hezekiah was sick and dying, I sent Isaiah to tell him to put his house in order, because he was going to die of that sickness. But Hezekiah wept, and I sent Isaiah back to tell him that he will not die again, but I have healed him and added fifteen years to his life. And the sign that Isaiah gave to Hezekiah was that the shadow on the sundial, instead of going forward, will go backward ten degrees to show him that I added fifteen years to his life and healed him. I said, All this I know, Lord. Where are you going with all this? So he told me, Calculate the cross product. If fifteen years gives ten degrees rotation, what will a thousand years give? The number we are looking for is 10 times a thousand divided by 15. And to my great surprise, it was 666.666. It has repeating or recurring decimals. The decimal representation of 666 is periodic. So the Lord told me, what did I say about the number 666 in the book of Revelation? I said, this calls for wisdom. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. That number is 666, Revelation 13, verse 18 in the NRV. So you see, I have given you insight into my wisdom to calculate the number of the man, 666. So now you know sin, sickness, disease and death is not from me but from Satan. They keep repeating or recurring in people's lives from one generation to the other and they came from the devil and forever they will be from the devil. He comes to steal, kill and destroy, but I have come that people might have life and even have it abundantly. John 10 verse 10 In my heart, one day is like a thousand years for humans, which seems like eternity to humans. I give everybody who believes in Christ Jesus eternal life, the day they believe in Christ, as I promised them, saying, The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6 verse 23. 
Oh, brothers and sisters, I jumped out of my bed and I ran around the bedroom shouting, Glory, glory, with tears in my eyes. And I knelt down and said, Lord, you are true and your word is the truth. Just like exact science, so is your word. From Genesis to Revelation, you have proven that sin, sickness, disease and death are of the devil, and you came to destroy all the works of the devil as it is written. He who commits sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3 verse 8 you anointed Jesus for this very purpose, as it is written, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Acts 10 verse 38 And the last enemy to be destroyed is death. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 26 the devil, Satan, who deceived the people, was thrown into the lake of burning sulphur where the beast, whose number is 666, and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night for ever and ever. Revelation 20 verse 10 Then death and hell were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death, and anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Revelation 20 verse 14 to 15 When Christians read of the mark of the beast in the book of Revelation that would be on the forehead and on the hand of his followers, it is written, The beast also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive the mark on their right hand or on the foreheads, so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. This calls for wisdom. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of the man. That number is 666. Revelation 13 verse 16 to 18 the common understanding that Christians have is that people will be literally having the number 666 tattooed on their forehead or on their right hand to be able to buy and sell. This might literally happen one day. That is why Christians are against electronic chips being implanted in people's hands because they think it is the mark of the beast. What Christians have failed to understand in this scripture is that those trying to teach us that what we think will determine what we will do. In other words, our actions or conditions are our thought processes. Our actions are represented by our hand and our thought processes are represented by our forehead. That is, the mark of the beast in our hand and our thinking process is represented by having the mark of the beast on our forehead. That is why the devil tries so hard to change our way of thinking through television, radio and music media channels so that they will change our way of living and our actions. So our actions are conditioned by our thoughts. For example, when they wanted to pass the gay laws and gay marriage laws, almost every TV series or movie had a gay person playing a part, preparing the minds of the people to make homosexual relationships a normal thing and something acceptable before they passed the laws. So the devil has already been putting his mark in our thinking and in our actions.